The video, which could not be independently verified by Reuters, comes a day ahead of a key meeting in Tunis Friday, where Western and Arab nations are expected to call for an immediate ceasefire in Syria. And, uh, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in London says that Syria is on the brink. But it is clear to me that uh, uh, there will be a breaking point. I wish it would be sooner so that more lives would be saved uh, than later, but I have absolutely no doubt there will be such a breaking point. She also said that the Syrian opposition will become increasingly capable and find the means to launch attacks. Uh, there will be increasingly capable opposition forces. They will, from somewhere, somehow, find the means to defend themselves as well as begin offensive measures. About 70 nations, including the United States, Turkey, and European and Arab countries that want Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad to step down, will take part in the talks. But Russia and China, which have jointly vetoed two UN Security Council resolutions on Syria, say they will stay away. <laughs> Hundreds of angry tribesmen march through the dusty streets of Banu, in northwestern Pakistan. They're protesting against U.S. drone attacks in the region. Chanting anti-American slogans, demonstrators gather to listen to local leaders denounce the controversial tactics employed by the U.S. in its battle against militants near the Afghan border. Over the last three years, Drone strikes have quietly become the U.S. administration's weapon of choice against insurgents. In 2010 alone, the unmanned aerial vehicles claimed more than a thousand lives. One anti-drone activist describes the attacks as terrorism. These are innocent tribesmen who defeated the British, who defeated Russia. Today, America is terrified of their might. There are no terrorists here. These are suffering tribal people. This is just American terrorism. America is the biggest terrorist. The sweeping use of drone strikes in Pakistan has created unprecedented anti-American sentiment in the volatile country. While U.S. intelligence officials claim that only a handful of civilians have died in drone attacks, the vast majority of Pakistanis believe thousands of non-combatants have perished. Well, there is no doubt Pakistani people are really getting uh, to a point of no return about the U.S.-Pakistan relations. And uh, the real issue that Pakistani people are facing is indifference by the leadership. There was a rally of, of about a thousand people in Islamabad which had a cluster of uh, leaders, but hardly one or two of them could be elected from a constituency uh, in a general election which is fair. So the problem is that all these people who are taking credit of these uh, this, uh, are trying to cultivate on this anti-U.S. sentiment do not have much credibility in the people. The ones who have actually uh, are not in the parliament. And that is the dilemma of Pakistan. And I'm, I'm talking about the newly emerging opposition, which is Imran, led by Imran Khan. That is not really uh, the one which has some presence in the parliament, but they have to mobilize people, and he has done that as well earlier. The problem in, in, totality, in, in an overall sense in Pakistan is that there are multiple centers of power, and everyone is uh, looking after its own particular sphere's interest. Pakistan's overall ownership is not with any leadership or institution. For example, there comes a point when military is being hurt by if the American actions, then definitely there are going to be stronger actions. If politicians are really facing some music, they become a kind of an opposition. And similarly, civil society or the media. But there is no general consensus as to how to deal with Park U.S. relations in the next, say, decade or so. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday. February 24th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, if you'd like to check it out, it's ddarko2012, and I recommend subscribing to ddarko2013, my other backup channel. 
Um, check out this poll. When do you think or feel the crap will hit the fan? Next three uh, months, next 12 months, or i.e. year, or next four years, or never. It'll be a smooth transition. So far, um, the majority, 39%, are saying within the next year, followed by the next three months. Okay, so I'm ready to move on here. The first article I have up is Head in the Sand, UK Recognizes Syrian Rebels. We have Britain will recognize the Syrian na uh, National Council as a legitimate representative of the Syrian people. Foreign Secretary William Hague said in a run-up uh, to the Friends of Syria meeting in Tunisia. The Friends of Syria. Well, no, they're the enemies of a sovereign Syria. That's what, I mean, they're, they're hatching plans. They already have al-Qaeda. They already have weapons. And so, you know... When Hillary Clinton says that, uh, they're going to find weapons somehow, some way. Well, they already have weapons, and um, she doesn't really care about loss of life. I, I can assure you of that, as long as it, uh, it furthers whatever their uh, political global agenda is. Uh, or maybe in a move that is unlikely to placate Chinese and Russian concerns over taking sides in a civil war, Hague further condemn Assad's uh, government as a criminal regime. So remember that with Gaddafi, remember that with um, Saddam Hussein. Finishing up with this article, uh, Hague urged the international community, right? <laughs> so it's just like, okay, well, who has any say in this international community? Well, I don't, you don't, nobody does except for people like uh, Clinton. Even she doesn't. She's just blabbing off whatever the Council on Foreign Relations and a Trilateral Commission and the Council on 300 tell her, right? Uh, whatever talking points they give her to tighten the diplomatic and economic stranglehold on Syrian President Bash Bashar al-Assad. Then we have Syria rebels will get arms somehow, some way, Hillary Clinton says. We saw in that video. Go in there and check that out. Uh, links will be posted in YouTube's video description for new viewers. Uh, Syrian rebels confirm receiving arms from Western countries. So the Syrian rebels have confirmed this. They said here that uh, foreign countries, including the West, are arming them to fight against government, uh, the government of President al-Assad. So, speaking at an international conference on Syria unrest in Tunisia, a Syrian opposition source said on uh, Friday that several countries are providing armed groups in Syria with weapons which are being smuggled into the country. He also criticized foreign par powers for ignoring the arms smuggling uh, aimed at causing chaos in Syria. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia's foreign minister, Saudi bin Faisal bin Abdul Aziz Al Saad, attending or attending the Friends of Syria conference, has openly supporting arming uh, Assad opponents. And of course, you had Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, and um, and uh, our favorite Mr. McCain, John McCain, uh, calling for arming the uh, the Syrian terrorist rebels. It says here, Syria British Special Forces CIA MI6 supporting armed insurgency, uh, NATO intervention uh, contemplated. So they're kind of already doing it here. That was January 7th. Just to give you some background, then we have Assad not ready to resign, says Russian um, MP. So he's not ready to resign. Well, that's not really surprising to me. But I would imagine a good deal of Americans that don't know what's going on, I would look at that and be like, uh, you know, oh, he's such a brutal dictator, and uh, you know, uh, he just, you know, doesn't mind, you know, killing all these people in order, uh, you know, in this crackdown, whatever. So, to them, when they see something like this, not ready to resign means uh, we we better declare a humanitarian corridor or a no-fly zone, and. Um, you know, start bombing and, 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 and going in there like we did with Libya. It says here, Red Cross enters Homs. So the Red Cross is in there. Remember, we were talking about them. Big fraudulent uh, globalist, um, cha quote, charity in the name of charity, in the name of humanitarian humanitarianism. We're going to go in there and save these people from, from a tyrannical government. So U.S. European security officials discount Iran-Al-Qaeda links. Well, they have to because there is no relation. I mean, why would there be... A relationship between um, Al Qaeda, which is Al Qaeda, backed by the CIA, you know, a fabrication of the Zionists and all them. Uh, why would they be uh, working with Iran, who is having to deal with CIA assets in their country all the time? So, uh, no, I don't see them working together. So, um, the intelligence agencies little own their own private terrorist group urges outside help for Syrian rebels. Remember, I covered this. From the, the 12th. So it's pretty crazy because you have all these countries all meeting up deciding a sovereign nation's future, right? Um, and then you even have Al Qaeda, their own private terrorist group who um, had a regime change take place, helped a regime uh, change take place in Libya. But you also have what? The Muslim Brotherhood, the best organization uh, and funded opposition political movement in Syria is the Muslim Brotherhood. And this is uh, a former CIA officer that's saying this. So 
the Western zombies that are going to pay their taxes to, and they're going to literally voice support for this because Fox and, C and CNN, they're all the same. They'll tell them that they need to go and, and stop this bloodshed, right? But the irony here is, is what? You're going to have, like you did in post-Libya, you're going to have Sharia law. It's going to be more radical than it was before. Where Libya, it was actually um, semi-liberal socially for women. Uh, in, in, in Syria, they actually, just like Iran, they're able to be scientists, they're able to go about their way. It's just, but it, it, people think that they're out there chopping fingers off every day, and it's not like that. You know, just like in Egypt, you know, they have the Muslim Brotherhood in there, they want to get Sharia law. It's like Pakistan, same thing. I mean, uh, Benazir Bhutto, she was a female, right? And what happened to her? She got assassinated. But nobody bothers to ask the actual people in Pakistan, the actual people in Syria, what they want. So Russia, again, on the 22nd, warns Israel uh, not to attack Iran. It's kind of funny when I heard uh, Israel being uh, referred to as uh, the Rothschild's own private army, their own private state and intelligence agency. I mean, that's kind of spooky. But uh, UN should weigh in on legality of Iran's strike, Brazil's foreign minister tells Yahoo News. So, yeah, they're calling on uh, the global government. And what is weird is that, uh, you know, ultimately that's who makes the decisions, right? Because it's all in the name of what? We got a UN, humanitarian uh, mission. We got to go. So they're already kind of deciding uh, how to declare wars, when to declare wars. Like in Libya, like in Somalia, with Bagbo and Cote d'Ivoire. USA tries to involve South Caucasian countries into war against Iran. The director of General Institute for Caspian Cooperation, Sergei Mekayev, is sure that the USA is trying to involve the South Caucasian countries into war against Iran. He expressed such views at an interview with the new Azerbaijan agency. He stated that Americans, jointly with allies, would draw into the war on their side. The northern region neighbors of Iran, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, maybe Armenia, for sure, Georgia says they will be able uh, to demand from Russia loyalty to its military operation. What will Iranian war spill into Azerbaijan? The Russian presidential candidate, Vladimir, uh, stated that in the summer, World War III will start. As soon as they cross Syria, Iran will be next. Azerbaijan will take advantage and try to recapture uh, Karabakh, or however you pronounce it. Armenia will counteract. Turkey will support Azerbaijan. And he says, here's how our country can be drawn into a war in the summer of 2012. According to experts in Russia and Armenia, the U.S. agreed with Azerbaijan to give it uh, Karabakh in return for support to actions on Iraq. So it has nothing to do with humanitarian missions. It's about, uh, you know, getting territory when you join those NATO forces and give 100 troops to go take down a sovereign nation. Then a third source, U.S. targeted at destabilizing situation in South Caucasus. Uh, destabilization of the South Caucasus is within the U.S. plans and will be realized through the American Greater Middle East Project, Polish expert uh, Pikorski told Armenian News, News.am. According to him, it will be more real if the ruling regime of Syria falls. After the regime falls, a real war will be launched. Syria is the key partner of Iran in the region, and Iran's position will weaken if Syria's authorities fall. Furthermore, the events will reflect into the South Caucasus, the expert said. According to him, he went on and said that it will also weaken Russia, but also China. The Greater Middle East Project will allow the U.S. to achieve geopolitical advantages and increase its influence in the Central Asia uh, area rich in hydrocarbons. Russia says the U.S. might use Kyrgyzstan Air Base in Iran strikes. If you've been a longtime viewer, you've you know or realize or remember that I've mentioned Central Asia many times as far as, quote, World War III. So we're starting to see it, and hopefully this video will tie it together. Iran has proof Azerbaijan aids Mossad, CIA agents. A senior lawmaker says Iran has obtained documents indicating that the Azeri officials have been aiding and abetting U.S. and Israeli agents who assassinated Iranian scientists. Something worth noting, uh, the authorities, particularly the country's security officials, are well aware that the CIA and Mossad agents have bases and are active in Azerbaijan. Then Moldova used to be a Soviet... Um, part of the Soviet Union, uh, 91 got their independence, right? Now they're back by the West. They're a puppet government, right? Russia's encroachment. Moldova will bring down Russian planes and defend airspace with NATO. So they were puppet governments before with Russia. You know, it's just hard to really become a sovereign state. And he, even if you do, you get played in the middle like this. U.S. said to offer India with help uh, replacing crude oil supplies from Iran. In other words, you better take our oil. You won't get our fighter jets. Oil rises towards $124 in Iran. Tension or fear-mongering. Gasoline prices are not rising. The dollar is falling. CIA carving out new roles in Baluchistan. Pakistan was offered surge in U.S. boots on ground in return for helping oust general. 
and Taliban fighters basically trying to protect their asses from a coup.